Hello and welcome to stage six of the Tour of Britain, which finishes here at the spectacular location of Kefili Castle in South Wales, providing the perfect backdrop for all sorts of battle puns only loosely related to bike racing. Let's not bother with any of them. Here are the highlights of yesterday. Mark Cavendish has had many exceptional days in his glittering career and so too his Bradley Wiggins, but yesterday wasn't one of them for either of Team Sky's superstars. Instead, it was Ivan Basso who got things going, joined by Bernie Salzberger and Bartosz Hazarski. They were caught before Gun Hill, Endura started to split things up, Mark Cavendish dropped off the back, and Bradley Wiggins, mystifyingly, went back to help. And that was that for both of their chances in the overall. Up front, John Tien and Locke applied the pressure. As the lead group hit Stoke, Mark DeMar hit for home. 147 kilometres of really tough terrain, and he's got it. He's going to raise his arms here. He's already celebrating. Look at this. Mark DeMar gives the victory salute. And finally, 11 minutes and 45 seconds after the leader had crossed the line, so too did Mark Cavendish and Bradley Wiggins, looking rather sullen. Lee Howard then regains the lead he first won in Dumfries. The gap is just seven seconds, though, to Boy Van Poppel. Zep van Marker lurks dangerously in third at 17 seconds. Christian Knees is Sky's only GC hope now at 24 seconds, the same time as Liquid Gas's Damiano Caruso and Endura's John Tien and Locke. Well, that was the carnage. That was stage five, at least from Team Sky's perspective. And uh, things got a whole lot worse for them too overnight with Bradley Wiggins succumbing to a stomach bug and not making it to the start of today's stage at Welshpool. So, Rob Hales, um, you've had a, a night to sleep on it. I hope you got a slightly better night's sleep than Bradley Wiggins obviously did. But um, what went wrong yesterday? Can you explain it? Not really. We were watching the race earlier on and they seemed to be chasing awfully hard. There were only three guys clear. None of them really a danger for GC. Extremely hard riding that, that put them on the back foot. And then as soon as they got into the tough roads, that was it. They lost Luke Rowe and then unfortunately Cavendish started to crack. And that was it. It just went to pieces and they were just left with uh, Christian Knies up the front to, to battle it out for, for their contention. If truth be told, Rob, um, in the three years that they've participated on this on the national ro stage race, um, they have made spectacularly heavy weather of trying to win it, haven't they? They really have. And it's always been on Stoke as well, yeah. always that stage. And, uh, you know, the way they try to make things simple, keep it simple, in doing that, they seem to have overcomplicated this race every time they've ridden and yeah I think they were having some serious discussions they must have had after yesterday's stage because it all it did all just go pear-shaped for them. Perhaps sometimes it's a question of having too many cards <coughs> to play and they're not sure which one to deal at which point I mean they have got only one left now though Christian Knees as, as you've mentioned what sort of a what sort of a card is he? Well he's a good strong rider and, and it really is a good card to play but the issue for them is they had a really strong team for that one rider and they've lost their biggest engine in Bradley Wiggins. He's now gone home. So it, that job that they've got now is so much harder. Indeed. Well, uh, Christian Knaes was one of a number of riders we caught up with at the start today before the stage got underway. Back in the rainbow stripes, World Championships next week. How does it feel? Uh, it's good. I'm really enjoying it. It's sad every time I put on. I know my days are counting down this jersey, but it's good to do it on home roads. Uh, yeah, the Tour of Britain. Two stage wins in the bag. I mean, how did that feel, especially on home soil in this jersey? That's great. You know, I got two. Luke got the first stage um, and got to wear the gold jersey as well. So it's always nice in the National Tour coming and, and be successful. You know, we've still got a job to do, still two more days. Hopefully we get Christian Knees up on, uh, on the podium then. So. I had really good legs the first two days. Yesterday, actually, I felt not that strong like the days before. But um, I still managed to go in that, in that group. So, yeah, I hope. Lex will be a bit better today. Um, I'm confident to uh, maybe get to the podium. This parkour is really great. Like yesterday, I suffered really uh, to stay in front because it's pretty steep for me. But then um, Nathan Haas of our team is, is really strong. It's perfect for him here. And uh, he's fourth in GC. So uh, we'll take his card and, and then uh, see how far I can get to. Well, I grew up in Cardiff, st still live there. Um, that climb is. 2k from where I live so I know it like the back of my hand and yeah it's gonna be really tough uh, expecting quite a lot of people up there friends and family so it's gonna be quite a special day for me I guess. This is the day that might shape the King of the Mountains classification and possibly the top order of the race itself. The Welsh leg heads due south from Welsh Pool offering two category one climbs at the midway point before the sting in the tail in Caerphilly 
It's a lung-busting double loop of the Category 1 Carefilly Mountain for the race to the line. Rugged, exposed, demanding. Once again, Wales hosts the toughest stage in this year's event. No doubt the scenery is spectacular for the tourist, but for the riders, this one will be a long, hard day in the saddle. Four Category 1 climbs line the route that meanders through the heart of Wales, culminating in two circuits of Caerphilly and its famous mountain before the final high-speed descent to the finish line next to the city's castle. Without doubt, the surprise package of last year Racing in the black of Rafa Condor, John Tin and Locke produced a masterclass in climbing. Always looking easy, always fluent and quite in control. Winning the King of the Mountains competition and fifth in the overall GC. It's definitely a good shot window for myself. Um, you know, we went into it with no, no clear objectives, but uh, yeah, you know, came out of it with the jersey and, um, you know, definitely, uh, definitely put myself out there a bit. So, you know, good memories of that race. The harder the race, the harder the course, um, the the greater the sort of selection, you know, so it's less about um, tactics and watching out for, a, you know, a soft move, if you like, going up the road and um, the terrain takes care of it a bit more, so that suits me. But it's his climbing ability that has marked this former mountain bike rider out from the crowd. Strength and a plan of attack, the key weapons in his armoury. You've just got to go into it, uh, you know, keep your powder dry and try and be as fresh as possible for when you hit the climbs. It's such an explosive effort, you're going to need to, um, you know, have not not being too active through the day, so the goal is to get there as uh, you know in as good shape as possible. You can't let your nerves, um, you know, get the better of you. Then it, you know that's how plans fall apart. You know, or you you bottle out of something. So you just got to um, you know come up with a plan and, and stick to it. Or sometimes the nerves help. You know it, that translates into into a bit of adrenaline and instinct takes over, and you just you know so important. You can use them to your advantage. Last year's memorable pictures from Kefili Mountain were one of the race highlights and this year they've added a second lap that'll probably blow the race to bits in the closing stages. So it's only, uh, I think it's two kilometres from the top to the finish and um, with two times up it there's going to be some big time gaps that we didn't see last year. So um, yeah, it's definitely going to be decisive. Well, the sun's out here at the finish line, and in many ways, Rob, this is the Queen stage of the Tour of Britain, isn't it? Uh, spectacular scenery and a really spectacular finish that we all enjoyed last year on the equivalent stage. Yeah, Tor Hushoff took the victory uh, last year in that rainbow jersey. Slightly different, we've got the same finish, but we do it twice now to a sense of Carefully Mountain. It's a short climb, but it is steep, and there's a technical descent after it, so it really is going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. Van Poppel. He was fifth last year, but like I say, it was just that one ascent. So we could see someone like Jonathan Tin and Locke from uh, Endura Racing. This is really going to suit him, and I know he's looking forward to this stage. He is indeed. I spoke over breakfast this morning over the sausages and bacon with the race leader, Lee Howard, and he made no bones about it. He said Tin and Locke will attack. I mean, it's an open secret, isn't it? Whether he goes on the first ascent or the second, what do you think? Um, quite possibly the first because it's only a short, uh, it's a short circuit this one, it's around four and a half, five kilometres. So with that uh, descent as well, if you get time, you only need 10 seconds or so, it's going to be awfully difficult to bring that back. OK, well let's get over to the race now in the capable hands of this man and Hugh Porter. The field just getting ready to roll out from Wellspool on the way down to Caerphilly. 189 kilometres, this is the Queen stage. Four major climbs to be negotiated. So this could be where the overall winner finally declares his intentions. Mark Cavendish once again back in his World Champs jersey. That'll make him happy. And there is the IG Markets gold jersey leader. And that is Lee Howard of Australia. All four of these climbs all in the back half of the race today. And all four of them first category climbs. The field just completing the rollout before the neutralised flag is pulled in, then the race will be on for real. And believe me, it's going to be some contest today. Well, look at this, Magnus Baxter on the front of the peloton already trying to get clear. Well, he lives in South Wales, that's where he's destined to arrive today in Caerphilly, so he'd dearly love to try and nail the stage. And at the back, we've got riders from uh, Endura Racing. Yep, Ian Bibby that was on the back there, as we see Marcin Biavlocki there, node 4 Giordana, just pressing on on the front. Graham Briggs as well, Rally, Rally GAC. 
Also caught a glimpse of the rider in green from Anne Post as we see Christian House, the leader of the Skoda King of the Mountains. Now, obviously, he's dead keen to get clear because he wants to try and get more points in uh, his pursuit of securing the overall lead in the King of the Mountains contest. He's Baxted at the front and tucked in at the back is the rider from Anne Post. Well, look at this, Magnus Baxted on the front of the peloton already trying to get clear. Well, he lives in South Wales. That's where he's destined to arrive today in Caerphilly. So he'd dearly love to try and nail the stage. And at the back, we've got riders from uh, Endura Racing. Yep, Ian Bibby, that was on the back there. As we see Marcin Biablocki there, node for Giordana, just pressing on on the front. Graham Briggs as well, Rally, Rally GAC. Also caught a glimpse of the rider in green from Anne Post as we see Christian House, the leader of the Skoda King of the Mountains. Now, obviously, he's dead keen to get clear because he wants to try and get more points in uh, his pursuit of securing the overall lead in the King of the Mountains contest. He's Baxted at the front and tucked in at the back is the rider from Anne Post. Well, here's Graham Briggs. Well, he doesn't want his racing cape anymore and further things he's not going to carry either. He's obviously aware of just how tough it is. Well, we're crossing the marker there. One kilometre to go to the first in the Yodel Spring competition, and that comes in Kerry after 25 kilometres. And on the front of the peloton, it is the team of Orica Greenedge. Yeah, Orica Greenedge taking up the chase. That is their role today. Lee Howard still in the IG gold jersey as race leader. As we see all six riders all taking it in turns evenly just to set the pace on the front. The road stretching out in front of them and uh, the riders in this uh, group that are going away, none of them are a threat to the overall leader in this competition, Pete Williams of uh, Node 4 Giordana. So he's going to be pleased with that. There is the line and it looks as though they're just going to ride through it here and it looks like the teammate then of Pete Williams, although Briggs looks as though he's going to have a go here but he's too late so first over the line is Marcin Biablocki and Graham Briggs coming through in second place and Biablocki there just looking after his teammates lead in that competition and that is Peter Williams there is the result two names missing from that caption are Gilly Bear and Craven they make up the six are away Welcome back to stage six of the Tour of Britain. Our six race leaders were nearly seven minutes ahead as they rode through the second sprint of the day at Llandidrod Wells. Rallies Graham Briggs taking maximum points from Bia Blocky, Backstead and Craven. Ahead lay the first of four category one climbs across the Welsh mountains. There is the sign that tells us we are starting the first mountain climb of the day. This is the ascent of Camoen, a first category ascent of 4.3 kilometres in length. Now then, we're going to keep an eye on uh, the king of the mountains leader here, Christian House from Rafa Condor, as we feel uh, both Rob and I that he slipped away in this group so he can tuck a few points under his belt to increase his lead. So the developments of the race, let me just tell you, in the early stages, this group of six gave the peloton the slip, and the composition of the group is Marcin Bila Blocky of Node 4 Giordana, Dan Craven of IG Sigma Sport, Christian House, Rafa Condor, uh, Pieter Gilibert from Anpos, Sean Kelly, Graham Briggs, Rafa GAC, and Magnus Backstead from UK Youth Cycling. This is a, a day when uh, Jonathan Tiernan Locke, last year's King of the Mountains, is likely to show his hand. He's well placed in the race, Rob, and uh, we'll expect him to start to get involved in the action. He's six at the moment, 24 seconds back on the lead. Yes, he is only 24 seconds. That's certainly something that he can push forward for today. Uh, another rider to look out for in second place, Boy Van Poppel you, uh, from United Healthcare. He was fifth on the stage last year, although we do have two ascents of that final climb today. Short climb, extremely steep, with a very technical descent off the back of it. So the lead for Christian House in the Skoda King of the Mountains over his nearest challenger, the Spaniard, that's Pablo Urtason on the Euskaltel Euskadi team, is 22 points. So now if he crosses the summit of this climb first, his tally goes to 76. Now the most points that the nearest challenger Urtason could get is for seventh, and that means he'll get four points. So it means that Christian House will have gained another six points over his nearest challenger. 
It's a long climb, as we've mentioned, but it's fast, isn't it? There's a good rhythm being set there. 4.3 kilometres in length, but uh, it isn't steep like the ones they were tackling yesterday. They really are flying up it at this stage. They are, and the riders are having a predominantly a cross tailwind today, helping push them along. Now you can see it's beginning to ramp up. The laboured style is reflecting here. Not only are the facial expressions changing, but also the positions on the bike as they lever themselves forward. And this is when it's really starting to hurt. Yeah, they're just on one of the tougher sections here, and visually it's quite easy to see, I think, for how difficult this section is, just the laboured pedalling action. Now then, looks like we're going to get our spectators turning up again. Last year we had, uh, well, a variety of people to concentrate on, on the Kafili Mountain. But I must admit, Christian House, OK, his face is, uh, uh, is showing uh, concern, but uh, he is riding comfortably. Well, there, Briggs, you can see, is marooned in no man's land off the back of the three going ahead. And Magnus Backstead, well, suffering even more. And right at the back is uh, Gilibert. So... These three beginning to go away as Briggs grits his teeth here, the Yorkshireman, and comes back into the wheel of the three. They're just tapping out a rhythm now, just getting themselves finding their own pace on this climb. That was a tough section there, only a short section, which just, just makes the riders they really have to power over that. And uh, Maggie Backstead there and Gilly Bear from Anne Post in the green on the back, they were just getting themselves over. It's all back together now, and they are... They'll ride now all the way to the top, I'm sure, together and try and stick together so they can work as a unit over the top of the climb and down onto the descent into the second climb. And that comes on Brecon Beacons. It's about 33 kilometres after uh, the ascent of Cum Owen has been dealt with and Christian House will be very keen to try and pick up maximum points at the top of that one as well. Now then, Harris beginning to just raise the tempo here as they're getting towards the top over the cattle grid. And he's applying the pressure. House takes it from Backstead, from Gilly Bear, Craven, Villa, Blocky and Briggs. As expected, Christian House able to take that. They've, they've ridden sensibly up this climb. It would have been quite easy for, for Christian House to have pressed on and dropped at least two of the riders from this group. It's extremely windy over the top here, so they're going to need all the wheels they can get as shelter, because there's an awful lot of road between here and the next climb. Jonathan Tin and Locke right in the middle of the screen, and you can see that the IG Markets gold jersey of Lee Howard as well closing in on him because Tien and Locke is going to be the big danger man today. Let me just reiterate the positions. Lee Howard leading and Boy Van Poppel second at seven seconds. Sepp Van Mark of uh, Garmin is in a third spot at 17. But coming back to Christian uh, Nace, he's fifth. The leading Skyrider at 24 and Jonathan Tien and Locke on the same time. Well, there we are, the... Musette just flapping in the breeze. He'll take the food out of that and that will be uh, dispensed with. But this is a perfect tactical move for the points in the mountains by uh, Christian House. Let's look at this, three riders from Enduro Racing. Zach Dempster, the big fella in the middle, downing at the side of him. Jonathan Tierney locked the other side. And now coming through from Sky, we've got presence from Sky. As we can see, the line ahead. Now then, I haven't seen any evidence. No, there he is right at the back, number 46, Pablo Urteson. He's not going to bother with any points, so I reckon he's, uh, he's surrendered. He's accepted that Christian House is too strong for him, and he's the man that's going to collect all the points. Zach Dempster was over the line first to scoop up the uh, four points for seven spot. Well, that's all academic because they're not in the competition for the King of the Mountains. So at the moment, those ten points for Christian House, very, very valuable, and that's taken his lead up significantly. He's got 76 now to 44 of Urteson. Well, there I think we have it. I think we've, we're have we looking at the, the the leader and the winner, no doubt, of that jersey, Christian House. So as we look at the peloton descending off the top of Camoen, the lead at the moment is 5.53 as the peloton head towards the feeding station. You're looking at the leading group here of six. 
leading group of six riders that went away early on the stage. It's Marcin Biela Blocky, who is riding on the node for Giordano team, Dan Craven of IG Sigma Sport, Christian House, Rafa Conda, Pieta Gilibert of Anpost, Sean Kelly, Graham Briggs of Rally GAC, and Magnus Backstead of UK Youth Cycling. They've got a lead now of uh, 3 minutes and 35 seconds as we just look at the back of the peloton here. They're heading on towards the second climb, which is there, the start of the second climb over Brecon Beacons, and this is a 7-kilometre long ascent. The leading group just starting the ascent now. Big Magnus Backstead uh, there, you can see him, number 152 who's uh, having quite a good ride today, slipping away in this group. Six minutes and 59 seconds behind the uh, overall leader, and he is the top placed in the uh, standings. So we are set. The pattern of the race here is indicating uh, exactly what Rob Hales and myself were talking about overnight, that Jonathan Tin and Locke of the Endura racing team I feel he's going to make his move when we get to the Carefilly Mountain that they've got to climb twice uh, this year. Look at the crowds assembled here, Rob, on the second of the climbs. <laughs> yeah, they are massive. Well, the crowds have been out on the flat in the towns, but uh, on the climbs here, it's certainly where crowds like to come out. The riders obviously passing a little bit slower, so they get more of a view. And uh, what a view they've got. They'll be able to see these riders coming. This is more a climb, similar to the ones that they encounter on the continent, isn't it? It's long, and they can get into a rhythm, as opposed to the ones that reared up yesterday. Yes, this is uh, not too steep, this one at all, but it is long, as you've said. 6.9 kilometres, 4.2 miles in old money. And uh, plenty of vision for people to see them coming. The peloton here, when they get to that open section that swings round to the left, they may well be able to get a glimpse of their the group that they are chasing. Setting good tempo here with uh, the IG Sigma rider Dan Craven in his wheel. Christian House just going out of our screen. Well, they're certainly uh, tapping it out here, aren't they? And they're closing in towards the top. He's happy, isn't he? Bill Blocky. I'm enjoying myself today. There's confirmation of the advantage then. It's four minutes. A window of advantage for the six of four minutes, but for how much longer? It's just like a taper burning down and you feel there's going to be a sudden explosion of action as Orica Green Edge are there right on the front looking after the interests of the IG Gold Jersey leader of Lee Howard. Now then, we're waiting to see whether Christian House is going to uh, collect the 10 points on the top again here. Generous applause reverberating around the mountain here. In fact, uh, the applause is resonating all over the Brecon Beacons as the Tour of Britain powers its way towards the, uh, the crest here of the second climb of the day of Brecon Beacons. And they really are flying, and Christian House looks uh, composed in that uh, super silky smooth style with his hands in the centre of the bars crouched down and he can see ahead now the pennants fluttering on each side of the road that tells him the line is getting nearer he's looking for the 10 points Magnus Backstead in the wheel of Christian House no one in this group has got any points up until today so they're not going to challenge House so they will allow him to go over the line first and collect the full 10 Great riding here then by the skipper of the Rafa Condor squad. Here he comes then, up to the line. Ten points to add to the ten he got at the top of Cum Owen. So that's 20 in the uh, in the bank for today, Rob. 86 points now he's tally. This uh, King of the Mountains uh, competition is becoming his own property. Bernard Eisel. Jeremy Hunt, Team Sky. This is the first time we've seen Team Sky on the front of the peloton. They've got their one lone rider now, that one car to play, Christian Knies. Approaching the summit then, and the line. And it doesn't look again as though Urteson is bothered about picking up any points, and it's looking very much as though it's going to be Orica Greenedge that will uh, pick up the seventh place points yep four points then going to the rider from orica green edge 
So that's the second mountain tidied up then at Brecon Beacons, 124 kilometres covered. And as you can see, 62 to go. It's the aerial shot of the peloton that are trailing the sextet up the road by three minutes and 21 seconds still. And it's uh, Team Sky that have now come to the sharp end. And also there, you can see right in the middle of our screen, is Sepp van Mark of Garmin Sharp, who's currently third overall. Now then, here's the uh, presence beginning to reflect of Enduro Racing and Jonathan Tiernan and Locke there. Now then, Rob, if there is an echelon section going to, uh, a crosswind section, I should say, uh, going to be uh, raced out now, we'll see the echelon and you see the formation of the brake, so let's watch from any fractures behind from the group. Well, I think we're already starting to see a few further back, but here, no problem whatsoever for this group. They're just blissfully unaware of the carnage that's going on behind them in the peloton, with Team Sky and Jeremy Hunt in particular applying a lot more pressure. Here we can see Tier and Lock now, and yep, they, they split again. We're getting uh, remnants of the peloton behind. Yep, that's exactly what we expected, and that is why Team Sky have come through. What they do, they do their homework overnight, and they look at the weather conditions and the wind directions, and then look at the route, and they know exactly where they're going to go to the front and uh, form the echelons, and then, of course, it absolutely breaks the field to bits, and you can see that it's fractured significantly, and the leading group, let's have a look at it up there, it's starting to go away, isn't it? And there's Mark Cavendish. He's just got himself distance there. He's got himself in the wind. He's going to have to link up with this group now. They're just coming to catch him as we see the front group. Here we go. Bernie Salzberger going through. Paul Voss. And then it looks like Luke Rose about to go through. And here's Mark Cavendish back in that second group on the road there. Look at that. There's a nice push for the world champion. That's the respect for the rainbow jersey, and that was Fabio Sabatini, the Italian, that just uh, gave the world champion a nice palm and a push up into the wheels. Yep, this is quite early in this stage to be doing damage like this, but damage it is being done now. It's all happening in front of us here. As Garmin Sharp, that set Van Mark there, really pressing on now, really trying to open up the gaps. That breakaway of six was able to maintain a lead of over two minutes all the way to the third Yodel sprint. But at the head of the chase group, no one was allowed to get away. There was a hard fall for Aussie Zach Dempster, the Enduro racing rider hitting the deck in Merthyr Tydfil, which put an end to his race. Node 4 Giordana's Marcin Bierblocki claimed maximum points on the third and final Yodel sprint ahead of Magnus Backstead of Team UK Youth and Peter Gilbert from the Ancost Sean Kelly team. Join us after the break as we get set for an exciting finish. Coming up to the sign that indicates the start of the Skoda King of the Mountains, the penultimate climb of the day of the Kafili Mountain. So this is the first ascent of the mountain, and just look at the crowds. They've turned up in their thousands here to see the uh, contest, and it's going to be a real grueling, exciting gladiatorial contest as well. Looking at the six leaders now, they're on the foot slopes of the Carefilly Mountain. This has got to be climbed two times, remember, and when they get to the line, they've got an eight-kilometre finishing loop. Team Sky have come to the front now, looking after the interest of their leading rider, Christian Knees, who's 24 seconds back from the IG Markets gold jersey being held by Lee Howard. Magnus Backstead is the first casualty to lose contact with the front group. We said we thought this would happen because he's a big, burly Swede, and this is a very hard climb. Jonathan Tin and Locke comes to the sharp end of the contest then. This is exactly what we expected. And it's Dan Craven that's next to lose contact with the leaders. And Pieter Gilibert, the Belgian, is also clinging to the back precariously. So is Christian House. And the man that's gone away amazingly is Briggs, the sprinter, as Jonathan Tin and Locke here. Just look at the style of this man as he dances on the pedals and pushes the rest of the sword. The reaction coming from Garmin Sharp behind. 
line. They've got to look after the interest of their third place rider, and that's Sepp van Mark. 1.5 kilometers this climb. It's a short one, but it's a steep one. And here we can see Jonathan Tin and Locke. He's going for the win. He's going for the jersey. This is exactly what we expected. He's gone a little early. I'd have thought he might have gone on the second ascent, but he's obviously got the good legs here. Jonathan Tin and Locke now beginning to distance himself from the rest of the field. He's currently lying sixth in the race at 24 seconds. But look at the style, determination and confidence of the man. He's still trying to catch these two here. That's Briggs and Christian House. He'll pick them up in a few moments' time. Now this is the chase beginning to form behind. Ivan Basso's in this. That looks like Caruso. Yeah, there Caruso. For Caruso, the team leader there from Liquid Gas. He's following the rider there from NetApp as they start to sweep up the remnants of this break. Picking up Bill the block he was, and here comes the man of the moment. Jonathan Tin and Lock. He goes past Briggs. Now then, he's beginning to set himself up for the run for the line and then the final finishing loop and the crowd just look at this this is just like the Tour de France they are all here thousands of them and Briggs look at this Briggs is finding the power to go with Jonathan Tin and Locke well I tell you if Briggsy can stay with Tin and Locke that will be so much benefit to Tin and Locke that will help him on the back side of this circuit over the top of this climb and down the descent as they loop back round to take this climb one more time. Here they go, here we go, over the top. Here's the points, Tin and Locke takes maximum. Yeah, Jonathan Tin and Locke takes the maximum points on the mountain climb. Briggs comes over in second place. But of course, that's really all academic because it's all about who is gonna pick up the vital bonus on the line. And also, of course, the stage victory. This is the defining moment. This is the race of selection. And we've got one of the young Great Britain riders here, Rob. Is this Edmondson? It looks like Josh Edmondson. He was the only sole GB rider, young rider, to make that selection group yesterday. And here he is. He's just been selected for the World Championships next week. He's doing himself no harm whatsoever up in this front group. What a ride there by the young rider, Josh Edmondson. Briggs then looks round to see where Jonathan Tiernan and Locke is. I think he may have gone a little bit too early, actually. The leader of the Endura team would have probably done better to wait for the final ascent. And uh, they could get picked up by this chasing group. They could very well do. But uh, if they do, if he's got anything left, he'll only do the same thing again. I'm pretty sure Tiernan and Locke is climbing so well. Supremely confident on the climbs. One Netap right. going clear. Is that Hazerski or Koenig? Could be Hazarski, actually, the pole. Could well be Hazarski trying to go across the gap. He's ninth overall, two minutes in the overall standing, so it would make sense. So we've now got three riders at the head of the contest, and that is going to help, help a great deal. It's strengthened the uh, conviction of the trio that are going away. Briggs finally looks as though he's beginning to puff here. He's struggling to stay in contention, and Briggs has lost contact. We thought that would be the case. So it's now Jonathan Tiernan and Locke, and he's got one rider with him that may not contribute at all to the pace setting. Yep, 105. Koenig from Netap. He can do an awful lot of damage on the back, back end of this climb over the top and help really helped there John Tier and Locke he's saying come on help me yeah Koenig was actually uh, ninth in this race overall last year Rob only one minute and 19 seconds back he's a pretty handy rider to have but look at Edmondson Edmondson he's totally inspired here this young rider then on the Great Britain team absolutely flying he's only 20 years of age and he's not afraid of reputations and he could take a few scalps here he's bridging uh, to the leaders and he's escaped from the peloton well, he's the carrot now, isn't he? He's the carrot lying there, dangling between these two riders that have gone clear and the rest of the break behind, the rest of the group chasing, trying to bring them back. But Tiernan Locke out of the saddle now. 
Looks calm and collected, doesn't he? He certainly does, and he needs to keep the pace on now. He needs to keep the pressure applied. This could be the moment when Jonathan Tiernan Locke underpins the overall victory for the Tour of Britain. Encouragement from the side here. They recognise just what an important move it is. And now Edmondson forced to come out of the saddle here as he tries to stay clear of the group that are closing down on him. And it's the rider from Liquid Gas that's bringing the rest of the uh, group back up to Edmondson. Come on, Josh. Josh Edmondson there, the young rider from Great Britain, as we go back to the front of the race here. Now we finally see the face, the <laughs> face of Tiernan Locke. He's finally started to have issues now. He really is starting to hurt, but not surprisingly, the effort that he's putting in here. Well, there's a rich mix of supporters here, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> We've got, uh, I don't know, is that the Kafili boxing champion? But he was out supporting. And, of course, he's got a lot of uh, uh, fellow fellow, uh, fellow friends with him as well. But look at this now. I'm really impressed with the climbing style of Edmondson. He's surely a big rider of the future. My word, he's riding so well here. But now the gap, 43 seconds back to the, uh, the gold jersey. And that means that Lee Howard has lost the overall lead. And you're looking at the man here that's going to become the new leader of the Tour of Britain. He is distancing himself from his nearest challengers with every pedal rev. It's 12 seconds back to Edmondson. And then it's 43 seconds back to the group that contains the other serious contenders. Ten points there, maximum points. He's not bothered about that. He's not thinking about the, the mountains points whatsoever. He's thinking about... The victory today coming in across the finish here in carefully ahead of his main rivals. Not only that, we've got those time bonuses on the line. Ten seconds for the win and nine seconds for second. Six for second and four for third. And uh, just across the top of the climb then, it was uh, the maximum point of ten then to Tin and Locke. The next points went to Koenig and then the third over the line for the eight points was Edmondson as we look at the chasers here and it's becoming really hard now for Lee Howard his style is becoming ragged and laboured as the brace of leaders are now on the descent and they're beginning to drop like stones towards the finishing line in Caerphilly but Jonathan Tin and Locke is doing all the work here because he's the man that's got the most to gain so in that case, you would probably favour Koenig for the sprint then, for the stage victory, but of course it's the amount of time that he's putting into the gold jersey, and at the moment you can see 34 seconds back then to Lee Howard. Yeah, I'm sure Jonathan Tiernan and Locke would desperately like to win this stage, but I think that's going to play second fiddle today behind Leopold Koenig, I would imagine. The work that, that Tiernan and Locke is doing is all for general classification all for that IG gold jersey and those those valuable seconds bonuses that he will get first or second he's going to take some points he's going to take some seconds valuable seconds Koenig is actually back in 15th place overall at 530 so he's not going to affect the uh, the positions and in fact the uh, other riders in the overall standings here will uh, still stay up there in contention it's just a slight rejigging of the top six and the man that will gain the most is going to be of course uh, Jonathan Tin and Locke who is sixth at the moment he's going to elevate himself up into the number one position he knows how important this is now and he's piling on the pressure pouring on the coals as he tries to gain every single second that's going to see him uh, take the overall lead Koenig is not contributing he's just got the stage victory in mind Edmondson's oh. going to get picked up here. Yep, two riders from the Liquid Gas team there. So they are helping with the pace setting and they're going to pick Edmondson up. So the under 23 Great Britain rider has been pulled back. Yep, desperate time there for Edmondson. Basso it is who's done the damage. And the reason being he's pressing on because look who's out the back. Look who's lost contact. It's the race leader, Lee Howard, there in the gold. And Van Poppel as well. Clark's with him as well. And we've also got Van Poppel, good spot there, Rob. So there's going to be a lot of time lost here. Well, it's seconds, but it's so valuable because this race is being fought right down to the vital seconds. And now on the front is Connick. Connick has decided now to contribute to the pace setting, helping Jonathan Tiernan-Locke 
and that of course is going to give the uh, the rider from the southwest an opportunity here of further increasing his lead yeah i'm unsurprised now that he's coming to work to do some of the pace setting here tin and lock has done so much pretty sure he's still going to come away with that victory but who knows tin and lock he's inspired at the moment certainly is as the rest of the group are now uh, making their way as well towards the finish closing stages now you can see how near we are to the finish there it is the red kite one kilometer to go and we've got this brace of riders at the front jonathan tin and law and leopold konig soon be turning taking the right hand turn into the finish straight here just having a little discussion here Desperately <laughs> urging Koenig to come through. Not willing. He wants to. And here is the group that uh, they've gone away from. So it's Leopold Koenig of Team Netup versus Jonathan Tien and Lock of Endura Racing for the stage victory. But for Jonathan Tien and Lock, the spoils are far greater because the IG Markets gold jersey is going to wait for him and he needs to keep the pressure on at all time. Looks like uh, the rider from the team net up is going to make an early strike for the line here and the stage victory. They're into the finishing funnel now. That's exactly, exactly what we expected. So it's uh, Konig that's going to come up here to take the stage victory. He takes the stage victory. Second over the line is Jonathan Tiernan and Lock. And there are the celebrations then for the stage winner, Leopold Konig, who rides on the NetApp team. He's the arrival of the next group, and look at the sprint here. It's being led out by Nathan Haas, the Australian, who's on the Garmin Sharp team. He started the day in fourth place overall, and that bonus will be good enough to lift him into third place. There's the winner of the stage, that's Leopold Konig. And here they are, the IG Markets gold jersey holder is Lee Howard, but he's going to surrender that now because Tin and Lock has done enough to become the new leader. King Leopold taking the win outside Kefili Castle. He jumped Tin and Lock, rode for home, and frankly, it was never in doubt. Two seconds separated the first pair over the line, and there were 10 riders in the chase group led home 19 seconds down by Garmin's Nathan Haas. Damiano Caruso in fourth, with Luke Rowe behind him in fifth. A good ride, by the way, from Great Britain's Simon Yates to finish in eighth. Yeah, before the race, I already targeted this stage, <clears throat> and I wanted to focus for that because it suited me well. And uh, I, after the first stage, I was already out from the, from the GC contention, so I'm really happy that I, I won a stage and uh, that was targeted. There was a major shake-up in the general classification again. John Tien and Locke takes over, as widely expected, but his gap is only 13 seconds to Lee Howard and 18 seconds to Nathan Haas, who picked up a four-second bonus on the line. Boy Van Poppel drops to fourth, with Caruso and Jones the only other riders within a minute. Sky's challenge for the overall melted away today, Christian Knees dropping to 1 minute 34 seconds. NetApp's Leopold Koenig took the applause, he read the race perfectly and, most importantly, lived with Tien and Locke on the climb. Christian House took a huge stride towards his targets, taking a 42-point lead in the Skoda King of the Mountains. There are only 51 points left there on the road, so tomorrow he should seal the deal. And Pete Williams is almost there in the Yodel Sprints competition too. 16 points his lead, and his nearest rivals are both teammates. But this is what he came here for. John Tin and Locke got close to the overall lead this time last year. Now he's got it. The question is, can he hold it all the way to the finish line on Sunday? I mean, tomorrow's finish is a bit like today, maybe not severe, but um, you know, there's a couple hard climbs and um, you know, descent to the finish. So, I think more of the same. But yes, for sure, we're not gonna, um, we're gonna try and not let it go now. Well, plenty to absorb after the Queen stage of the Tour of Britain and a few hardy folk from uh, South Wales. I'm not going to say where we exactly are because I, I keep pronouncing it wrong and they keep getting on my case. <laughs> but they've joined us just to, uh, to think about what went on today, Rob. Um, John Tin and Lock. We expected it, it came. Was it as good as you might have hoped for? I think it was pretty much uh, as expected, as you said, yeah, and certainly a good ride by him. Probably wanted a few more seconds in hand, but he did the job. I think uh, Lee Howard did a fantastic job of holding on to that second place. But no, Jonathan, uh, he did the ride, and he certainly uh, created some excitement for the crowd out on the climb there. Certainly. Do you think with those two ascents that he actually wanted to go on the first ascent, or, or was his preferred plan to have gone with more power on that second, second it, time around? It was early, wasn't it? Uh, I think he had a, a little bit of a helping hand there with uh, the remnants of the break, Graham Briggs notably. 
Uh, and then obviously having NetApp come across to him as well on that second second time up there. But yeah, he he just worked it out on the road, and uh, it, it did it did work out for him. You no, know, it was a great ride there by by Enduro Racing. Indeed, and he's identified uh, Nathan Hassner from Team Garmin as his his most credible rival. Is that how you see it as well? Oh, I think so at the moment. Uh, there's there's still a few riders there. Caruso. Also yeah, sure. From Liquid Gas, obviously, Van Basso looking after him. So tomorrow, a good day for him. Probably on Sunday, not so much. But uh, Lee Howard, he's still there, and there's still time bonuses out on the road. And just finally, Luke Rowe. What about his brother's contribution today? Well, he was uh, probably one of the best views, actually, for a lot of people out on the climb there. Um, boxing gloves, and was he in, I don't know, was he in underwear or shorts? Uh, it, I was, don't know. it was, it was but, interesting, whatever it was. Matt Rowe, that was Luke Rowe's brother. OK, I'm sure we'll have more of the same out on the hills of the southwest tomorrow. Stage 7 runs from Barnstable to Dartmouth, and we are on air with live coverage from 1.15. See you then.